Greetings viewers and welcome to what I'm hoping will be another educational video for you. If you clicked on this video link, you're here to learn about blade traps, so let's talk about them. This is a blade trap that you see right in front of you. In Seven Days to Die, this thing is what I would call the most expensive and it's also the largest. It has the biggest footprint and takes up the most power to run. So what does this thing do as I'm looking at it? There's no menu to click on, there's nothing special to do. Basically, it's just a big spinny blade that once you hook power to it and turn it on it just spins and slices and dices the zombies but how do you get your hands on these things so just like the other traps you can purchase them from the merchant they're completely built you can loot them while you're running around in the wasteland and scrounging around for things or you can also craft them same as the other traps you have two options with which to craft them the first option is you you have to have advanced engineering level three unlocked so if we look at our skill tree here under intellect, if we go down to advanced engineering, you have to have the level three skill here. And this unlocks crafting for that and is also when you can start gaining XP from trap kills. So that's kind of handy because this thing slices and dices pretty well. However, in order to unlock level three in advanced engineering, you do have to have level six intellect unlocked. So it does require quite a few skill points to get to. The other option that you have besides leveling up and doing that is finding the schematic in the world. And that schematic looks like this right here. This little book icon is open because I have advanced engineering unlocking it. Otherwise the book would look like this where it's closed saying, hey, you haven't unlocked this yet. So once you read it, you can, uh, you'll can you be able to craft it. This one, unlike the fences, the electric fence posts and the switches does not look like anything else. So you'll definitely know if you find this or not. And I said it's one of the more expensive ones because if you look, it needs a lot of stuff to make. You've got to have forged iron, forged steel, mechanical parts, electrical parts, and oil, and a considerable amount of each. Now, keep in mind right now, I have advanced engineering maxed out, and this is still costing this much of these resources. So it does cost even more if you have nothing leveled up. So this is typically something you're gonna to wanna to use later on. Also, in order to repair it, you need forged steel. So if your base isn't fully upgraded to steel, and or at least the area you're gonna be encountering most of the zombie damage, I would recommend kind of holding off on these a little bit. They also do require, again, the most power. If I look at this thing, this one trap takes 20 watts, which is the most. There is also, again, no option. So I've got my little circuit set up here. So we are gonna go ahead and hook this up just so you can see what it does. Again, very simple. Got it hooked up to our switch, relay, trap. We turn our switch on. Oh, probably should turn our generator on first. There we go. And this thing takes up a three by three area. Anything that comes next to this thing is gonna get sliced and diced, including you. So once you have this thing set up, if it's on, I definitely stay away from it. If you're gonna do any kind of uh, pathing near it, I would recommend turning it off first. So how do we use this thing? Like, how do we make it usable in our horde base? Just slapping it on the ground here and letting zombies walk into it is a terrible idea unless you can reach wherever it is that they're gonna be hitting it because they're gonna damage it. It does take damage as it slices them, but if they are standing next to it and start swinging around because they're mad they're getting sliced, they're gonna damage it even more. Once this thing gets to a certain point, it's gonna start smoking and stop spinning. It's gonna stop doing any sort of damage until you repair it, which again is gonna cost you some forge steel so same as the other traps as you can see i cannot do anything with this thing if this trap is inside the barrier inside the borders of a land claim block so if we turn that on you can see this big green square it's within here so now i do have the option to pick it up if i hit e it is going to have a little bit of a countdown though they don't want you to be able to snag up all your traps and haul buns out of your horde base that's being demolished you're gonna have to stand there and uh, take some time to pick these up so what do we do with these things and what uh what what other information can i give you about them they do not have any sort of range that like they reach out and do anything so that's kind of uh pointless so how do people set these things up well i've got a couple different uh ways that you can use them here they may not necessarily be ideal they may be ideal for your horde base or you may be able to, able to adapt them to make them work for you as you can see right here i've got some that are double stacked like I said, these things do take up a three by three area. So if we kind of get a little bit aer better aerial picture, I just put these here to represent the, uh, the space it takes up. So again, it is in the center of a three by three. So unless you have it set up where zombies are gonna walk through this outer line here, they are not gonna get hit by it. 
if we have two blades doing that, that's double the damage, right? Well, another option that you have is that you can, and what most people do, especially if let's say you only find one trap or you can only afford one from the merchant or you only have enough resources to craft one, this is the ideal placement. This is what I would recommend. If this is your fighting position, like most people do, they have a hatch here. I would slap that thing right above this because they're going to remain stationary. They're going to be here trying to smack you. And while they're doing that, they're getting sliced by this blade. You also, while doing so, have the ability to reach and repair it. The way that I have these set up, you can do that as well. This one's kind of on the outer range of as far as you can reach for repairing. So let me go ahead and pick these up because I would not recommend having those there. Now, most people... We'll probably not use solid blocks attached to this. They use some sort of other little skinny thing that kind of comes off from the side and attaches. It, it honestly doesn't matter. The zombies are pathing through here to get to you. They are going to travel through these blades. More than likely, they're not going to stop halfway through and start punching it. They're going to just take damage on their own from slicing the zombies. But with, as with all the other traps, as long as you can reach it to repair it while it's sustaining damage repeatedly, that's a benefit to you. So... Like I said, this is the way most people have them set up. Zombies come running. You either get the double stack or the single stack getting sliced. The benefit of having the bottom one done by itself instead of just the top one is if right here, if I just had the top one, any dogs or crawlers, anything that came through here is going to be able to duck under that and not get hit. So this way you're actually able to hit standing zombies or any of the uh, little smaller ones. Or again, zombies that are down on all fours trying to crawl around like crazy people. This one doesn't have anything on top. I would not actually be able to install one on top because again, like we said here, this takes up a three by three space. So this is occupied right here. We cannot install another thing that would be in the way here. We would have to shift this whole thing over one if we were wanting to incorporate a double stack blade trap here and this one over the door as well. So let's go ahead and get in our little base here. I'm gonna turn on the generator. I'm gonna turn on the switch. So as you can see, all these are running. If we look at our generator here, we're taking up 82 watts. So two of those watts, one is from the relay, one is from the switch, and the, that's 20, 40, 60, 80. So let's see these things in action. That's why you guys are here, right? Let's uh, have 25 Arlene see what they can do. Oh, look at that. It's just like a blender. None of them have made it to the door. That's it. Out of the 25, none of them even made it to the door to hit us. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's go ahead and get rid of these so I can talk and not have to listen to that. Come on. There we go. So from our fighting position here, let's say there's a lull in combat. These things are spinning. They're going, you can repair them while they're spinning. Um, Let's go ahead and turn them on just so I can show you. So you can see that sustained quite a bit of damage, but obviously it's sliced and diced like crazy. We can reach that. This one didn't even sustain damage because they didn't even make it that far. Those double stack blade traps are pretty nasty. But again, as you look in the bottom right corner, we're just taking up steel every time we click on these things. So this is one configuration you can use, whether it's, again, the single, the double, two doubles, one over the door. In order to be able to reach this, I could stand back here and be out of the uh, the safety of being smacked by people at the door so I could keep this thing running. You can even reach it from back here. Now, if you leave it like this, what most people and what I do is I usually run a little beam across here because the zombies will see this square as a avenue to get in. If there's enough of them piled up at your door, depending on how your defenses are set up or the access to your base where your fighting position is, they will get down on all fours and crawl through this open one, one space square here. So putting a little beam across there knocks out their uh, ability to see that as an option to get to you. However, you will not be able to reach that unless you actually get a little bit closer. Same goes for these. If you've got these set up way out here, if there's zombies standing here punching you in the face, you're not going to be able to reach out and, and repair them. And chances are those are going to get damaged uh, beyond use. And potentially the zombies will be able to just run up and be like, hey, you know what? I'm mad. I can't get to this guy. I'm just going to start punching the closest thing. And guess what? Those traps are completely blown up and all the resources and time and effort you put into building them and installing them in your base are kind of gone to waste. So 
They're not the worst, they're not the best. I would not recommend solely relying on blade traps, especially ones that you cannot access during the hoard to repair. So how would I do it? What do I personally feel like? Again, this is my personal opinion. There's plenty of people out there that'll probably tell you I'm wrong and they've got a different, better way to do it. That's perfectly fine. This is the way that I do it. This is the way that I feel is probably better suited for me and my hoard setup. If you watch my previous trap videos, this base has been kind of upgraded a little bit. I have three access ramps for them to get to with little stairs for them to uh, climb up the little ramp here. I've got my electric fence posts that are running through this wall. Apparently I uh, missed some repairs. Apparently I missed a lot of repairs. The zombies are gonna hit this electric wire. What? Why, why are you over here? You're not part of this, go away. Anyway, so we've got our blocks that they're gonna have to hit this wire to stop to decide they wanna jump up on this block, which means they're gonna get shocked. Our two dart traps are gonna be shooting darts down this way through the block and over the block. So if it's a standing zombie or a dog or something a little bit lower, they're just gonna get hit either way. Gotta kinda make their way over here. And what I've done at this end, once they make this corner, is I've kinda shrunk the path down to a beam. So they're not gonna be able to stack up on this thing really well. By the time they get to my door, they're gonna pile up and they're gonna start to fall off. So we've got that same trap set up here that is gonna slice them as they're standing here. So we got a single zombie that runs up, they're gonna get their head sliced. I have moved these off to the side because if you've got enough zombies that are piling up at your fighting position here, let's say you didn't have any of these other traps or anything else to slow them down, and this is it. This is where you're fighting from. This is your last stand here, and you got the, uh, the traps just set where you can reach them to repair, which these you can. I'll show you in a second. Once the zombies pile up enough here, if they start to fall off of this beam because there's not enough room to stand, they're going to get pushed off to the side, which means they're going to start getting sliced. They're also going to fall down to the ground and have to start their journey all over again and run through the gauntlet to even have a chance to get to me at this door. So once we're inside and we look at it, this is that beam that I was telling you about. So this one by square is shrunk a little bit. And instead of a solid block here, I have railings because if I can't access the trap, I would have to squat down and be all the way up against this hatch. I can't move forward anymore to be able to repair this. That's not gonna do me any good if there's a whole bunch of zombies here punching me in the face. So as they're getting their heads sliced, I don't even technically have to be fighting them. I could be sitting back here shooting. We could set up the dart traps like I showed you in the other video where we stand on the pressure plate and let that shoot them while this thing's slicing their head. And then I can reach this thing. So if I were to shoot this, switch to my repair tool, I can stand all the way back here and click right through the railing and repair that blade trap. Same thing down here. If I were to damage that, zombies were to fall into it, get chopped up, I can stand back here. And from where I'm standing, because that's a ramp and there's also a block here, there's a slim chance that any cops are gonna see me from over there and start spitting, which is not only gonna come through and hit me, but could potentially get stopped and damage the trap, which is then gonna require even further repairs. So I just have the same thing set up on this side. I've got my one, one block here, and then directly next to that, I've got this knocked out with some railings. If these were bars, you cannot reach through. It must be the railing block. So go to shapes, we go over yep, to catwalks. You have the option for bars here. Use railings. Railings you can actually reach through to repair or reload things such as your dart traps or any kind of SMG or shotgun turrets, which we're not covering in this. So like I previously said, I like to, once things get convoluted and we've got this spaghetti noodle mess going on with all of our traps, oh, look at that, more repairs. I like to kind of label everything. I like to have everything on its own circuit because let's say, you know, hey, I don't have advanced engineering leveled up. I'm getting zero XP. Fences and dart traps are kind of stealing all the XP. Let me shut those off, but I want the blades running because they're going to be piling up here. And while I'm fighting, I want to at least have a chance Thin them out a little bit and say, oh, well, maybe you know what? There's too many. I can't handle them. I can't keep up with the repairs. I'm burning through my steel. Let me turn the other ones on to slow them down, stop them, get this horde night over with. Or, you know what? Turn them all on, hide over here and say, hey, I've got to answer this text message or uh, answer the call of nature. So I would kind of like to give you a little bit of a demonstration. We'll for fast forward through time here and start a, uh, a little horde and just kind of see the blade traps in action. And then we could turn the other stuff on and see how it does. Basically layering these traps, man, that, that is, that's all it's about is just layer them, 
let them help slow the the tide of zombies down get them to a manageable level for you get to a fighting position you can throw molotovs pipe bombs you can shoot them you can stand here at the window and duke it out with spears knuckles clubs whatever your choice weapon or skills that you've specced into are and just kind of let the zombies know who's the real boss in nava's game so i'm gonna go ahead and turn this on we're definitely gonna turn the blade traps on I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time. Let's uh, go to day 700. How about that? Uh, 2,200 hours. I can stand all the way up against this hatch. None of these things are hitting me. I'm safe. Our friends should be coming shortly. We do not have the electric wires or dart traps set up. So they are going to make it to this door pretty quickly. Oh. Now, we got a dog here. That dog is not being hit by that trap. It's not being hit by those side ones. So you are going to have to take care of those. This guy's getting sliced and diced. Not worried about him. We can watch this thing take damage. It goes down quick. So you definitely want to stay on top of the repairs for these things. And the more zombies are piled up, the more damage they're going to take. But I can just stand here. They can't even see me. I can hear them getting hit. You can see these things are taking damage because, again, they're kind of getting knocked off to the side. But this thing is uh, very good. Oh, we got another dog. The only, uh, the only weakness to that setup being like that. Get out of here, cop. I don't want you blowing up my traps. And that is also another weakness. If there is a cop that's standing here, he takes enough damage and somehow doesn't get dead, he will explode and that will ruin your uh, your blade trap set up here. Man, we're getting uh, all kinds of leapers. and Let's go ahead and turn these on. Do ourselves a little bit of a favor. Oh, no, no, no. I don't need you exploding. I don't need you spitting at me. So these things definitely take some damage, but they're protected over here. Guard traps are giving them the business. They're not even having a chance to make it. So that's another thing you can do is say, hey, I can't keep up with the repairs on these blade traps. Turn your other traps on. Give yourself a breather. Look at that. That thing was damaged pretty bad. good that one's good and then we turn these off again let's go back to blades let him have free access over here look at that he fell over there and got sliced by both of them and having that thin beam there a lot of times will kind of minimize the uh the amount of zombies that can pile up even if it's just one they'll a lot of times just fall off be very careful if there's demolishers you do not want to hit that button see they're trying to crawl in but they can't because that beam is blocking them let's keep that trap repaired stay out of the uh, line of fire there uh-oh looks like a cop blew up and we lost one of our traps oh hey buddy what are you doing and they still find a way to make it through. Get out of here. And I'm really worried about an abrasion. So, one of our traps got exploded. Oh, that one was broken to the point where it wouldn't work, but it was still alive. This one is completely gone. So, hey, you know what? They're kind of getting to a point where we're having a hard time managing them let's turn our other traps back on let's make sure our electric fence posts have uh, enough repairs let's get our blade traps up to speed here so that they're uh, 100% and now another thing that you can do while this is uh, active here uh, we got a zombie corpse that's in the way 
we'd have to wait till that body uh, he spawns. And as long as you have some blade traps in your inventory and the uh, chance that they get exploded like that, something bad happens, it's it's bound to happen. You think you've got it all set up, the zombies come in and just ruin every plan you had, and he just doesn't want to despawn. Come on, dog. Been able to successfully stay back here and repair. We only had to fight the one guy that actually made it in, so that's good. All right. Why is this dog not despawning? All right. So supposing the zombie has despawned, you can still access that point, and then I can go here and say, you know what? This is my. Uh... Oh, that's the fences one. I don't want that. I come back here again. They're labeled. They're marked. I can follow this wire. Hey, that's my relay for my blade traps. Guess what? Oh, look at that. I now have another working blade trap. This guy made it through. Here we go. Go back and check on our fences before those explode. Uh, I feel something's going to go bad with that one. It hasn't had any repairs yet. But there's still a wire running. It's still shocking them. Darts are still zapping. Or the wires are still zapping. Darts are still shooting. We can come in here. Having a double set of uh, dart traps is nice. I can have that one offline for just long enough to re reload it. Same thing here. And look at that. One's always firing. Let's keep that upgraded. And they did a number on that, didn't they? And uh, let's go back to blades. Let's turn those off. Let's let them get over here. Uh-oh. I heard a cop blow up. I don't know what got him. But our traps are still here. Uh-oh. That's not a good sound. Hopefully he blew up down below. Look at that. We still got a blade trap running. As long as you make it uh, high enough off the ground that them falling down and blowing up isn't an issue, then your traps will be safe. So the higher the better. Don't ever build on the ground. And, I mean, clearly, obviously by this point we've demonstrated it. You guys weren't here to watch a horde video. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the time just so they uh, shut up and stop coming. We can just stand back here and repair all day as long as you have steel. Keep swapping between your traps. Obviously, you'd most likely be here fighting, punching, shooting, whatever uh, choice weapons you've come up with against the zombie hordes. I'll turn all those on again. All right, so we're back to day one. Four o'clock in the morning. We'll just let these guys wear themselves out. But this is my ideal setup. I like this. I can stand back here where they can't even get to me and repair that blade trap if I really need to. Putting it against a solid block and having that there makes it tough to keep repaired. You saw how fast those things take damage. And if the traps aren't repaired and running, they aren't doing you any good. So you definitely got to stay on top of those, whether it's electric wires, dart traps being full of darts, fence posts. This is why we want to work in that layered approach. We're watching this guy just stand there running into the block, and he's dead. Oh, cop tried to make a slide for home, and uh, he missed. Dogs getting hit. Oh, got a dog that made it to the gate, though. He blitzed through there, didn't he? But you know what? That's one dog that we have to fight instead of 42 zombies piled up at our door. And we shot him in the cheeks, and he died. Oh, we got a soldier make it through, too. Oh, yep. Yeah, well, he didn't make it far. And you can see down in the uh, bottom right, we are getting XP. It's not a huge amount. Not as much as if we were fighting these guys, kill them with Molotovs and shotguns and assault rifles. But still getting the job done. All right. Y'all are annoying. Shut up. And we can shoot through the blade trap, too. So there's a good uh, 
tip for you. So even if you have this here and you want to leave it running, you can shoot through it. You're not going to damage it. It's only if you shoot the rotor portion of it, not through the blades. All right, are we done now? Turn all our traps off. We can turn our generator off. Step outside. Come on. Oh, we still got somebody out here. Hey, buddy. The show's over. You're going to have to go, okay? Thank you. So, hopefully you guys found this video useful. Just some, uh, some of my personal best use case scenarios and likes for the blade traps. Bro, you're done. Thank you. They do massive amounts of damage, but they also take a lot of damage. So, you've got to kind of use them strategically. I probably would not... Just like any of the other traps, I would not rely solely on blade traps because, yeah, it's going to slice through the zombies pretty quick, but just like they come in waves, if they break, then you're on your own. So you want to layer your defenses. Dude. Apparently they didn't get the uh, the cue that the horde's over. So we've got our layered defenses. We've got our electric wires that kind of slow them down. Next video I'm going to do is going to have the SMG and shotgun turrets, which I feel are a little bit overpowered but incorporating those even on top of all this, and you could literally just go AFK and hang out, work on homework, write an email, answer texts, play on Instagram, whatever it is that you do in your uh, spare time while the horde's attacking and you're kind of kicking your feet up and relaxing. You do, again, want to be able to reach all of the pieces of your trap and horde base. These are still fine. Got damage to the blocks out here, but... As long as you keep your traps repaired and you have the materials to do that, you're good to go. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. You learned something new about blade traps that maybe you didn't know before. You found another alternate configuration you could possibly use in your personal horde base setup. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever in your heart you feel the need to do. I am always open to constructive criticism or feedback. If there's anything I can do to make my videos better for you, please let me know. If you just say they suck, that does not help me make them not suck. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.